What's up guys? I recently updated my Galaxy Z Fold 3 to the latest firmware and Samsung, you sly dogs. There was a particular feature that came out with the Z Fold 4 and a lot of us thought that Samsung was going to keep that feature as an exclusive for the Z Fold 4. They rolled it out to Z Fold 3 users as well. Let's jump into it. So the knockout feature I first saw unveiled with the Z Fold 4 is the taskbar. That's right. If you have the Z Fold 3 and you haven't updated to the latest firmware yet, what are you waiting for? Go check for a software update right now. I'm sure this update will also be available to Z Fold 2 users. So if you have a Z Fold 2 and you haven't been able to see the update or update, let us know in the comment section below. So the taskbar is sick. It has me falling for the Z Fold 3 all over again. And I cannot express my gratitude to Samsung for not forgetting about their customers rocking their older flagships. We're in a world where company will hold features exclusive to their latest flagship even though their previous model flagships can very well handle those features as most new features are usually software related and not hardware. But they keep those new features exclusive to their newest flagship in hopes that you upgrade. So kudos Samsung. What makes this taskbar so awesome is that the design and function is very similar to the dock which has been synonymous with Macs for a while now. And of course, Windows now has a dock of their own starting with Windows 11. If you're on your home screen, the taskbar does not show up, but once you launch any app, the taskbar or dock, whichever you want to call it, will pop up. Starting from the right, these two applications are the last two applications you used. On the left of those apps, you have the apps that you frequently use. All the way to the left, you have your app drawer. If you're in one app and you're done and you need to jump into another app quickly, you can look at the taskbar. And if the app you want is there, you can press it and jump right into that app. And what's cool is, let's say you go back and forth between apps a lot, maybe copying text or whatever. If let's say I'm writing the captions to a YouTube video and I need to jump back and forth between YouTube and Google Docs, if I press the YouTube app, it jumps right into YouTube like it should. And in the taskbar, the YouTube app will change to Google Docs so I can quickly jump back into Google Docs after I finish with YouTube. It's a small but brilliant function for those who feel a little claustrophobic using split screen. But if you do enjoy split screen, the taskbar can help you with that as well. Just hold the YouTube app and drag it anywhere on your screen to split your screens. Need to add more apps? Just drag the new app and add it to your split screen. Samsung also made it super easy to get rid of your split screens as well. If you want to close an app, just press on the window handle for that app and press on the X. The window handle also provides more function than just closing an app. You can choose another app from your app draw to replace your open app. You can shrink your app to a small window, shrink your app to a floating bubble icon, and full screen your app. You can also use gestures to launch a split screen session. Also new for split screen, if you press on the three dots in the middle of your split apps, you can change the split screen layout, swap sides, and my favorite, you can create a shortcut of the apps you like to use in split screen and add that shortcut to your taskbar, your home screen, and apps edge panel. And the beautiful part is that this feature is also available for Samsung's tablets. I'm using the S7 Plus tablet and that same September 1st update was available for the S7 Plus tablet. I do have to say though, it is a little buggy on the tablet. While writing the script for this video, the taskbar froze. I had to close all apps and reopen. Also, when I clicked on the three dots in the middle, nothing happened at first. Again, I had to close all apps and try again. But I'm not going to complain too much because this feature makes this tablet a multitasking monster when it works. Also new with this update is adding a touchpad in flex mode for apps that don't fully support flex mode. Case in point, HBO Max. 
I use this app quite a lot in flex mode. Although you can use HBO Max in flex mode, navigation was always annoying. You could only navigate the app using the top screen. Now I can enable a touchpad to open on the bottom screen and use the touchpad to navigate HBO Max. It's not a huge game changer by any means, but a very welcome feature for those who have the same issue I have with apps like HBO Max when using flex mode. With the camera, we get a nice feature sure to excite selfie users. If you open the phone and launch camera, and you turn the cover display on, and turn the phone around, you will see selfie on the cover screen at the top left. If you press it, the cover screen will then show you your camera controls. You can change the camera mode, your lens, flash, and more. You can also take photos of text and copy and paste it into any application you want. Of course, Google Lens did beat Samsung to this feature. To do this, just press on the eye in gallery and text will be highlighted. You can copy, translate, select all and search. If the text contains a URL link, an internet option will show up so you can open the link in your Samsung web browser. Again. Nothing new, Google Lens already beat Samsung to it, but it's nice to have all these features built into the Gallery app. Also new with the Gallery app, you can add videos from your gallery to your call background for your contacts. Before, you were limited to what Samsung gave you, which was some colorful 3D spheres, a light blue transition, a sort of tie-dye thing, and your AR avatar, which was pretty dumb. Next, we have lock screen. This one is awesome. You now have the ability to add up to 15 photos and videos to use as your lock screen wallpaper. Awesome if you're someone who can't decide on using just one photo. Now you don't have to. Select up to 15. If your videos are too long, you will have to trim it down, but Samsung made it super easy to do all of this in the wallpaper settings. And lastly, you can set different motion smoothness for the cover screen and internal display. So you can set your cover screen to standard and have your internal display on adaptive. We also have more options when searching for a file in My Files. And lastly, we have improved security protection. And that does it for this video. There are also new features that were rolled out for the Samsung keyboard, but I use Gboard and the updates for the Samsung keyboard is mostly for emojis, which I don't really use. So I'm not going to go over that. But that does it for this video. Be sure to give me a thumbs up if you found this video helpful. If you didn't, thumbs down will work. I'll take a thumbs down. Be sure to subscribe for more videos like these. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.